Hey everyone, I am Mary Beth Garmo and I am here on the North House campus out on the commons demonstrating broom making for the next three days. And I'm just going to give you kind of a little overview of some of the stuff I have here, maybe make a broom, and if anybody has any questions about broom making or anything else, I guess, about North House, um, feel free to ask anytime. So, um, one of the things that I absolutely love about broom making is how diverse of a craft it is. I think when a lot of people think of brooms, they think of just the big tall thing that you sweep with or maybe a push broom or something like that. But um, I brought a whole bunch of different types of brooms to show people. Um, over here I have these smaller whisk brooms which I think are like the most absolutely useful broom on earth. You can use them in really small places and tents and RVs and workbenches. Um, I keep one in my car and I just, I probably personally have like five or six of these in my life and if one goes missing I feel totally lost. Um, I, I also have fun with dyeing broom corn so you can add some diversity to the project by adding color. Um, I've played around with different materials, so these have leather handles, um, and then I've also been playing around with some dust pans, so I have a couple leather dust pans out here, I don't have any of my wood ones right now. Um, this is an example of what the broom corn plant looks like. It grows way tall, like 15 feet tall, and then it sends out these tassels at the very top. And initially they have um, all these seeds on them, which I think are just beautiful. And it's really fun to add those in as an accent on brooms. Um, but then it, the, the broom corn, which is actually a sorghum plant, gets threshed. And so then you're left with this seedless material that has this beautiful crimp in it. And that's just great for sweeping up and catching all of the, the dust and debris and stuff on this floor. And then this part of the plant is the stem, and that is what is used to weave all of the top parts of these brooms. I just, I can cut them in half and they can weave a little bit easier. Right now they're like super, super brittle. It's almost like wood or something, hard to break, and cracks. Um, but once you soak it in water, it becomes nice and pliable and you can weave it. And then when it dries, it dries and it's really sturdy. Um, I also really love that brooms come in all different sizes. So these are an array of a bunch of little brooms. We have some veggie scrubbers and some pot scrubbers, which are really great on cast iron. Um, crumb brushes, which are really fun to use also like on a desk or just kind of smaller spaces. And cake testers use break off one of the fibers and use those instead of like a toothpick or something. And then a material that I recently started working with was or is Tampico and this is a really soft gentle fiber. Um, this is uh, made or it's it comes from Mexico. It's um, the leaves of an agave plant that have been dried out and then pounded and then it makes just all of these beautiful soft fibers. So that's kind of an array of what's on the table. And then I have some full-size brooms over on the side here. These skinny, long skinny cobweb brooms, lightweight for reaching up into corners. And then what most people think of, or more similar to what most people think of as your typical sweeping broom. Um, a little more decorative than maybe one would get at Home Depot or something, but it's the same idea. Um, so I'm just going to swing back around here to my shaving bowl. Um, so for those of you who were joining a little bit late, again, my name is Mary Duff Garmo and I am a broom maker. I teach here at North House as well. I teach broom making and wood turning. Um, and so I just did a brief overview of kind of the, the diversity of brooms and there's actually a lot more than what I make and have out here. People are doing just 
really cool things with brooms. So I definitely would recommend you spend a little time on the internet. If you have any inkling of an interest in broom making, you're going to find some cool stuff. It's a big, big hole to go down. Um, when I teach broom making, we use what I refer to as a foot bobbin. And this goes on the ground and then tensions your string. And so you can let the string out or pull it back in as you need. Um, but one of the things that's challenging about using this type of tool is that you're always bending over. You're always weaving on this far side away from you. So you kind of hunch and it ends up being hard on the back for a longer term broom making. So since I was going to be pretty much making brooms all day, most days, um, I ended up making uh, what's referred to as a shaving mule. It's similar to a shaving horse. It's typically a chair maker's tool and they stick the wood um, in this section and then you can use your foot and clamp down on it. Um, but then the one of the people that I learned broom making from took this design and modified it so that I can put string through here and I can pull as hard as I possibly can on this string and I can clamp it down with my foot and it's not going anywhere so I can make a really nice and tight broom using this tool and my weaving is facing up so it's really easy for me to access. I don't have to hunch over and look and see what's going on. It's right here in my plane of vision and I can just sit here and work pretty much all day without getting uncomfortable. So I have um, one of the tools that I find essential that most broom makers I know don't use them, but I just love it. It's this, um, I just call it a broom corn separator. And so before I make a broom, I go ahead and measure out all of the different parts of the broom and put it in here. And so it's really easy. Um, when you just, if you just have like a bundle of broom corn and you go to grab some, those little crimps at the top, they all just grab and hold together and it turns out to be a mess. And if you have one hand holding your broom and you're trying to grab some with the other hand, it can be crazy making. So this, the separator really helps hold everything apart and just makes my life a lot more safe. So I'm gonna make one of those whisk brooms that we looked at over on the table. And I'm starting out with a clove hitch at the very end of the broom and then tightening down on that as tight as I can. So I just, I don't want this broom to come apart. I want it to last for a really long time. And so I'm starting with one bundle of broom corn and then just picking up, and most of these are kind of evenly sized bundles. And then I just add in a second bundle and wrap around. A lot of people first look at these whisk brooms and they think that they're made from the top down, but they're actually made from the bottom towards the top. And so then I bend it to get that nice curve in the broom. And just kind of keep working and bending up. So now I'm going to add my next bundle of broom corn. And I just look to make sure the bottoms are fairly even. I can kind of trim it up at the end so it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I, every round or so I just stop. I really clamp down on my foot and I give everything a nice good tug to make sure it's good, good and tight and not going to come undone. And then again every so often stopping and bending. going to keep doing this for about five more bundles so if anybody has any questions please feel free to chime in what sort of cord are you using to wrap your bundles is that nylon or cotton this is nylon yeah 
that's a good question. A lot of people, one of the things people really think about like broom corn brooms is that they're they're mostly natural. They'll just break down after you're finished using them. Um, you can use like cotton or hemp, um, linen, um, and and they make very beautiful brooms. But you just really can't get them as tight. Um, I I have found that nylon is you know, it's, it's synthetic material. It, you'd have to, if you just want to like throw the broom in the compost, once you're done with it, you'd have to unwind it um, and dispose of the nylon before you can do that. But um, as of now, I just don't feel good about selling a broom that is doesn't have a lot of integrity. Um, but I do get a lot of requests for people who are looking for like really and truly 100% natural broom. So I'll, I'll probably experiment more with that in the future. Um, yeah. Oh, we have a question from Teresa. She's asking, where do you find your broom corn? She said she's tried growing it, um, but with no luck. Yeah, I have not yet tried to grow it. I'm curious what, what happened to Teresa's broom corn, if it just didn't tassel or it didn't grow. Um, in colder climates, you'll get really short tassels on it, which are long enough maybe to make like a little kitchen broom or something. But um, in, yeah, it really needs a good warm climate. And uh, this broom corn is grown in Mexico and um, that's kind of the main place that a lot of broom corn is grown these days. Um, I've been told that the U.S. used to be one of like the worldwide producer of broom corn and everybody who was growing every state like Illinois used to just produce tons and tons of broom corn. Um, but I believe after NAFTA, uh, pretty much all broom corn growing transitioned into Mexico. So if you want to buy it in any type of quantity, that's probably where it's coming from. Um, there's definitely some people still growing it in the U.S., but it's on a much smaller scale. So um, a lot of people who are doing large production broom making are buying it. Um, yeah, does that answer the question? need to count these really quick. So right now I'm adding, these are the stems of the plant that I showed you earlier. And I'm gonna be weaving these like a basket. So I wanna make sure that I have an odd number of stems. So right now I got nine stems tucked in there. And like I showed you before, so these have been soaked, so they bend, whereas that stem that I bent bent before just cracked in half as soon as I started putting any tension on it. And those bend over nicely and then I'm going to just slide a little loop in here so that this broom can be hung if somebody would prefer to hang it. So all of these stems at first get bent underneath the string. For a few rounds and then I'm just going to start weaving it. And so I lift up every other broom corn stem and then tug a little bit once it's underneath the stem that I want it to go under. And then because I have an odd number, now I got once around, and so it's going under the stems that it didn't go under the last round. If you end up with an even number of stems around, there's some really fun weaving patterns that you can do. You can do like over two under one, over two under one, and it kind of gives you a, a little twill type pattern. And I've seen just 
tons and tons of really cool stuff, but for a pretty standard broom. Odd number of stems and over and under is the easiest way to go. Questions mulling out there in internet world? No questions yet. Not Lisa yet. said her, um, her broom corn never matured enough to tussle out. Oh, okay. But you did answer her question. Great. Are you just eyeballing the, s the spacing there as you go around, or are you trying to tuck the string as uh, tightly? It not necessarily as tightly as I can. I could definitely get it tighter. My mm -hmm. um, my bigger concern is just making it even. Um, when one row gets really wide and the next is really narrow, it, it just doesn't look quite mm -hmm. as professional. And um, so, yeah, I've just kind of found what I consider a happy median between like the amount of time that it takes and the aesthetic. So the wider it is, um, I mean, it can still look really nice, but it just looks a little more coarse. Um, and then the really tight ones, they look they're beautiful, but it takes so long. And then it's not as economical, I guess one could say. So this is a handy, just kind of a string wrapped around a little piece of dowel. And this is how I'm gonna finish off my broom. And so traditionally broom making doesn't really have any knots in it. You notice I started with a hitch and now I'm just ending with creating some tension underneath the string. And so with the string tucked under, I can clamp my thumb onto the stems cut my string. This is always a nerve-wracking part because if your little loop gets twisted or caught somewhere then you're sitting here and you have all this tension on your thumb and then you just pull that through so the string comes underneath and then we can cut that off and your broom, if you put enough tension on that string right there, your broom's not going to come apart but that's one of the hardest parts about first getting into broom making is just trying to make sure that you have enough tension there. And then all these stems just get cut down to length. Sometimes you can like put an angle on it and you could go around and have all the stems angled or something like that. So there's lots of just little fun things that you can do with a broom to make it unique. And give it a little trimming on the end to get rid of some of those long pieces. And then I'll come back later with a knife, excuse me, and just carve off this top section of all that broom corn bundle up there. And then that will be a finished whisk broom. So I think that's most of what I wanted to show you all today. Do you all have any other questions or thoughts? Anything else going through people's minds? We can give it a moment for some questions to come in. I think there might be a bit of a lag. So we'll all right, sounds good. We'll just do another tour of the rooms maybe while we're 